this race, the 168th men's boat race. And a reminder, we had the coin toss earlier. That is where the crews get to decide which bank of the Thames they can start on. There's advantages to both. The initial advantage on the middle sex side, so that would be the right-hand lower side of your picture, and then the Surrey side on the left. And Cambridge called heads, but it came down as tails. So Oxford chose the Surrey side, and this could be potentially quite tight. When you look at the racing fixtures that these crews were involved with before the boat race began, they race against other crews to see how they're doing, to see where their form is at. And they both raced Oxford Brooks, really the university in form in Europe at the moment. Both lost, but by some very similar margins. So will we see something quite tight here? So Oxford on the Surrey side, Cambridge there, Jasper Parish in the Cox's seat will be on the Middlesex bank. And he's one of a number of athletes actually in these two crews who has real tideway experience. Learned to row at St Paul's School, which uh, they pass on the course as they go by, as did his older brother, Ollie Parrish, who's sitting in the seventh seat. And Jasper Parrish, you might remember last year, Cox the Cambridge women to resounding victory. So a win for him today, well, it would be special, wouldn't it, racing with your brother to a victory, but he could also become the youngest Cox to win both men's and women's races here in London. And the bank's filling up nicely now. That's the bow seat of the Oxford crew. James Forward, 20 years old from Pembroke College, studying PPE. And as our camera pans across the crew, we just see those final few little preparations taking place in the seven seat the president Tassilo von Müller German disappointed to miss out on blue boat selection last year but here he is will this be his moment and look at the edge of Putney Bridge there down on your picture how many people are aligning that buses going up and down the road will they stop and watch the start of this race. Now we know how incredibly important the start is. We saw that in the women's race only an hour ago when Oxford really took a charge on Cambridge, but ultimately Cambridge on the Surrey bank able to come through and really grapple control from Hammersmith Bridge onwards. So you can hear that buzz. The helicopters starting to whirl up in the air, the cameras taking it all in. So this is the 168th men's boat race. Currently Cambridge wins 85, Oxford wins 81. Oxford are the defending champions from 2022. So it all boils down to this. They are on the stake boats. And we're gonna hand you over to our commentary team now. Matthew Holland, a winning Cox with Cambridge Women in 2017, with the men's crew in 2019, Zoe de Toledo, who coxed Oxford in 2012, and commentator Andrew Cotter. I think it was the first race to take place on a Sunday. It wasn't supposed to, but because of an incident involving the Cambridge boat, it happened on a Sunday, and we're here on a Sunday again, and Cambridge, interested that they have become the slight favourites, because most people would say that Oxford would start this one as slight favourites. And everything has been in light blue so far. The reserves, the lightweights, and the women's race was won by Cambridge, as we saw in impressive fashion. And here, Cambridge try and take Let's it back get ready. from Oxford. Anthony Reynolds telling both crews to get ready. You know, nothing stays the same. New buildings on the backs, new faces in the boats, and sleek and modern shells that will skim across the water. But there's a constant about the boat race. The course from Mortlake to Putney twists and turns as it did 150 years ago. Jasper Parrish, hands still up. As it is from Anna O'Hanlon, both coxes with their hands up. Not happy perhaps with the angle that they're pointing at at the moment. Cambridge. And it's very important that they get their pointing right on the start because you don't want to be using the rudder as this cruiser getting into their rhythm. So both coxes with their hands up. Now Jasper Parrish puts his down. We're waiting then for Anna Hanlon from Sydney, the Australian who 
Attention. in control of this crew and there's the red flag that drops under the guise of Tony Reynolds and away they go the latest the newest page to be written in this old old story and again both these crews have a tendency in the matches we've seen in the past few months a tendency to get out very very fast indeed and even in this angle you can see them coming together Cambridge being worn straight off the start there and they thundered out of the start. They really went for it. But like you said right before the race, Matthew, with the rudder on now, not a good time to be steering. And now you can see Cambridge looking down from on high. You can see the bow, it starts to point towards the Middlesex station. And so they really have moved a little bit off to back towards the, the north bank to the Middlesex station. Now there's gap between the two, but in terms of who's in the lead, not much of a gap at all. And once again, the flag is up and the warning from Anthony Reynolds, Cambridge being warned. Cox Jasper Parrish is trying to get his crew right on their blade tip so they can feel the adrenaline, they can see exactly how much work they're having to put in to keep level with them. But it's a risky strategy because as you put that rudder on, as you get warned, you make the crew nervous and the twitches can really affect your rhythm here. And I think it's interesting to see Tony Reynolds straight in there making these demands of the crews. He's usually a multi-lane umpire. He's quite a risk-averse guy. He does not want these crews anywhere near each other. Cambridge now being worn. We saw in uh, a couple of matches in the, when they raced against clubs, we saw Jasper Parrish is not averse to aggressive coxing. So too Anna Hanlon in the Oxford boat. And Oxford have had this heavier crew, the bigger crew, the taller crew, going into the headwind that might well suit them and Cambridge might take advantage later in the race. Now Oxford being won, there is still enough clear water between the two crews. Tony Reynolds is being quite risk averse here, but I think it's with good reason given the performance of the crews in these fixtures. And you can see now the water, the wash that they're rowing in is really, really smacking the blades. You see lots of white water coming off the back end of their blades here, which is going to make the rhythm very difficult. Jasper is making a very, very, very bold move here. He's heading over towards the Craven Cottage. He's trying to get his crew clean water to row in and get their rhythm. I, I'm not sure that the water really worries this kind of move. It's a bit rough, but it's nothing compared to what we'd often see and actually now it looks like Anna O'Hanlon's following him over. Well this is heading over towards the Fulham Flats so Craven Cottage there the underneath the water the Fulham Flats come it's very shallow water now if you're looking for shelter that's fine but it's slack water it's not fast water the faster water is the deeper water so that's a gamble by Cambridge but my goodness it's paid off and you can see Oxford now creeping across. This is proving to be already one of the most fantastic boat races we've seen in the men's race here. And that's a half a length lead for Cambridge. And I think that was almost entirely down to Jasper Parrish's unbelievably bold move. I don't know. I think if Anna had stayed on the other side of the river, it might be different. I think the problem was she tried to follow him over there. And that means that now both crews are so far off their station. What's Tony Reynolds going to do about this now? I'm afraid I don't agree with you again. Look at the water that Oxford are rowing in here. They well, let's get the view, Matthew, of Wayne Palmer, who's down on the water. What do you make of it so far, Wayne? Well, this is wild stuff. We have not seen steering like this in a boat race for years. Jasper Paris judging that the water was rough enough that he should head over to that full of wall for shelter. And I thought he was crazy, but it might have actually worked. And even now, Cambridge are in slightly better water than Oxford and are, are capitalizing on this. So I have not seen steering like this in years. Well, as we talked about in the in the women's race, that first bend to the Middlesex station, Cambridge in this race, is worth about a quarter of a length. But you can see they've taken out more than that. It's almost a length now, and beyond that, the angle again can sometimes be deceptive, but that is a big, big lead early on for Cambridge. Looking at the rhythms of the crews, you can see just how smooth and relaxed Cambridge are rowing. They look like they're sliding forward towards the cock, slightly slower than Oxford, which is a good thing. That shows that they're relaxed, they're in control of their rhythm. Oxford, it looks a slightly more frantic. They look like they're working a little bit harder to try and keep the boat flowing. Well, that's what Rob Baker, the Cambridge coach, always talks about. He wants to row really long and move the boat as far as possible with each stroke. They're the lighter crew. It's not a heavy crew at all. In the blonde hair there in the middle of the Cambridge boat, you've got Tom Lynch, who is big, six foot five, six. But apart from that, quite small rowers, but they're moving well. Now, this is when the power of Oxford, can they bite back into that and try and row into this lead? I think Oxford have, what we've seen from the fixtures is that Oxford had a slightly better base pace. Now, 
This is their bend coming up. This should be worth a length to them. Can they use this now? Can they be confident sitting down to stay on their rhythm? We see James Ford, the 20-year-old from Pembroke College in the bows of the Oxford boat, looking across. He's the only one now that has overlap with the Cambridge crew. He's got to be shouting down to the guys saying, they're still there, we've got to stick with them. Well, Cambridge being warned here, you can see that they're moving off their Middlesex station, according to Tony Reynolds. Now, this is interesting, because if Oxford put a big push on here, Cambridge are being warned, and they could be in trouble here. If Oxford really dig in, and there is Jasper Parrish looking round and seeing the bow seat James forward in the bow of the Oxford boat my goodness it's risky we've seen there a repeat of what happened in the women's crew the crew that's but in the women's race the crew that's behind knows that when Cambridge are being warned if Anna O'Hanlon can touch Oxford she can touch Cambridge Cambridge are basically toast here it's a bold move and it hasn't paid off as yet well, these are anxious glances around from Jasper Parrish with his brother just two seats away, Ollie Parrish in the seven seat. There's Luca Ferraro in the stroke seat, setting the rhythm for the rest of the boat to follow. Cambridge being warned again, there is just a fraction of clear water between the two. But James Forward in the bow seat of Oxford, right at the back there, the light man, the technician, and Oxford are starting to move towards Cambridge again. So Cambridge once again being warned. This Oxford crew has got enough to get back in here let's not forget the name on the bows of this oxford boat oubc 2003 20 years ago ago that oxford crew rode back from down to win the race by one foot this oxford crew are going to know that they remember that that is going to be something they've watched that's going to be something they've talked about that's what they need to do now so there we are hammersmith bridge waiting for its own better days to come but the Green steel and wrought iron spires, the familiar sight, comes into interview and 80 to 85 percent of the time the crew that is in front of Hammersmith Bridge goes on to win the boat race. Cambridge in front at the moment but that lead remains the same and Oxford have got the strength and the power. Felix Drinkle in the stroke seat, he's going for his fourth boat race here, he's going for his first victory, the determination there from him to get finally what he calls a gold medal and not a silver in this race is enormous and that gap remains at just a fraction really and Middlesex, uh, Cambridge coming across in the Middlesex station again, Jasper Parrish looking around once again to see what that lead is. So Anna O'Hanlon, the Oxford Cox, is playing a very smooth game here. What she's doing is keeping her crew just close enough to Cambridge that Cambridge can't steer across and negate their bend. She's holding them out wide, and I think that's a really, really smooth move to go through. Well, we've seen the choppiest waters now. They will start to calm down as we round the bend here. Now, on the Surrey station, which is where Oxford are, the big bend plays in their favour. If Cambridge were to open a bit more clear water, they could choose that line. They could choose the Surrey station if, if it, effectively and negate the advantage of that bend. And they're trying to put a push in here, Cambridge. This, is, this one length distance between crews is actually a real vital point. It's a turning point in the race for both crews. If you're ahead, you want to break. If you're down, you need to stick. Just go down. Matt Edge there in the bow seat for Cambridge. And then Nick Mayhew, Noam Mouillet, the French athlete, and Brett Taylor, Thomas Lynch, the giant Canadian, said Benzacri is one before at Ely and Ollie Parrish, Luca Ferraro, and then Jasper Parrish. And then that is the gap to Oxford. Cambridge once again being warned as Oxford refused to go away. Oxford are doing a very good job here of holding in. That Cambridge rhythm is very, very strong, and they're trying to get away, and that Cox Anna O'Hanlon isn't letting them get away. So as we look down on the gap, let's bring in Wayne Palmer once again in the water. Well, this is one of the best races we've seen in years. Cambridge did incredible work to lead to Hammersmith the way they did, but Oxford are not letting them get away. They're forcing Cambridge to row around the outside of this bend. But Cambridge now have to hold that position for the next few minutes and run out of Oxford's bend. Tony Reynolds standing in front of me here, not happy with the steering of Cambridge right now. Well, we can see it there, Wayne. It's, uh, it's extraordinary because Anna Hanlon is just, as you said, just forcing Cambridge out there. The gap is... We can't quite see it on that angle, the gap between the two crews, but 
Oxford just trying to hold Cambridge out in the Middlesex water. And this is a really uncomfortable position to row in when you're down physically because the oars from the Cambridge boat are putting in so much disturbance to the water. You can feel that in the boat. And look at Anna Hanlon now. She's so focused, but that heart rate up at 175 beats per minute. You know, nearly three times what's normal for her. As you mentioned there, the dirty water that is coming down, the puddles they have to row through, you just don't get that stability of the oars going in. So Cambridge in the boss seat, controlling the river at the moment. But there we take you through the Oxford boat, James Forward and Bow, Tom Shaddock, Freddie Orpin, the Giants, six foot eight and a half, Alex Bebb in four, James Doran, all six foot seven of them. These are the power men, JP Dufour, the Swiss Canadian, Tassilo von Muller, the German president, and then Felix Drinkel in the stroke seat, Anno Hanlon driving them all on. And again, the gap doesn't grow, but as Zoe was pointing out, now Cambridge can choose their station. There's enough of a gap. They're directly behind Oxford and they're sending down the puddles, sending down the dirty water. And this will be hard now for Oxford to come back. I think it will be hard, but I don't think it would be impossible. You can see that they're not letting Cambridge get away easy. And although Cambridge looked very smooth, we don't know how much work they've put in to get to that position. Oxford are still very aggressive, and you can hear Cambridge umpire Tony Reynolds warning them. So it looks like they've come right back again. Look at that move that Oxford have put in. We could see in that shot that their bows were once again crossing with the stern of the Cambridge boat. This race is far from over. <laughs> well, as soon as you get any sort of mere, near overlap of bow to stern again, then the respective boats have to go to the respective stations again. So Cambridge on the right-hand side, the North Bank, the Middlesex station, Oxford, Surrey, and now this is where Anna Hanlon. Let's listen in to Anna Hanlon here as she drives on the crew. 35 on the right pole. She's just called a push. She's asked for an extra 12.5% on the front end of the stroke. She's asking him to really grip onto their front end. That's the point where you put the blade into the water and push on the heel, push on the foot plate there. I heard that differently. I heard her asking for them to give their 12.5%, as in each eighth of them, you know, each one of the eight guys has to put in that 12.5%. They are one crew. They have to build that together. But what she's asking them for, ultimately, whichever one it is, is she's asking them to just keep that pressure on Cambridge, not let them go. You just look at the times there, ignore records, because records are built when you're good crews, yes, but more importantly, when you've got a strong, a strong tide coming in, carrying the crews forward. So what was more important there was Oxford five seconds behind Cambridge. And again, they're just hanging on there. It didn't look like five seconds to me, but the gap is not significant. Cambridge have not yet broken Oxford. And we're getting to the stage in the race now where Cambridge will have presumably been trying several stages to break away. And given that they haven't been able to, you've got to wonder as they come into their final stretch, how much more have they got left in the tank? Oxford are clinging on really, really well here. And I have absolute confidence that coach Rob Baker would have prepped Cambridge for this second half, but it's going to be a big ask for Cambridge to stay that far in front on this coming into this latter half of the race. You see Chiswick B appear in the uh, boats bouncing around with the wash of the flotilla that follows the boat race. And Jasper Parrish again, they glance around. But he doesn't need to tell his crew where Oxford are because they will see them and they'll see that they're still very much in this. Listening to Jasper there, he's very calm. You can tell that he's got absolute confidence in that his crew can now win this. And looking at the way that the stern pair, his brother Ollie Parrish at seven, Luca Ferraro at stroke, the GB under-23 pair at this year's under-23 World Championships are rowing. I think they're pretty confident now that Cambridge are going to row away from this. Well, I'd say that lead now is beginning to look significant. And perhaps Oxford, well, they won't think it or believe it, realise it, but they won't have given up at all. But uh, Cambridge know every one of their oarsmen will be looking at that lead. And that will give them such a lift. Over that last minute, Cambridge didn't do anything big. They just consolidated. They were rowing a long stroke. They looked relaxed. You can see that they're in utter synchronicity, and that's such an important thing in rowing. You have to be aware that no matter which seat you're sitting in, what you're doing, every movement you make is going to affect the way that your teammates can row 
and what they feel. And in that last minute and a half, Cambridge have just started to sweep away. No big moves, just inches each stroke. Well, sure. It happens very rarely that crews come from behind at, at Barnesbridge to win, and Barnesbridge is growing closer. 1949, Cambridge came from just behind Oxford in 1952, did likewise, then Oxford did in 2002. But that was when uh, there was an exhausted roar in the, in the Cambridge board, who's almost dead weight by the stage. It's not a big lead, but it's enough, and this race really is there now for Cambridge to take. You saw a stroke of Oxford, Felix Drinkle, looking round to see Cambridge, and I think he will be slightly disheartened to see that they're further away than he imagined. He's been in this position before, three times now. So the question is, is he going to be able to find enough? Is he going to be able to drive his men on enough to get that lead back? And Felix Drinkle is a, a, a great rower, a great oarsman who's achieved things internationally and, and for Oxford, but... As uh, Matthew was saying, they are four times in the boat race, and it looks like being a fourth defeat. There he is in the stroke seat for Oxford, and they both shoot the central span of Barnesbridge, and with every stroke, Cambridge grow in stature, I'm sure, and get closer to Chiswick Bridge, round the bends. We're looking at a really beautiful rhythm from the Cambridge boat here. Look at the smoothness that they come forward, the way they put the blades in the water perfectly together. They look super relaxed. Oxford are now starting to sprint to the line early, which is the right thing to do if you're behind. You've got to throw everything at it early to try and get ahead. But Cambridge are comfortably in control of this finish. I think this is the bit for Cambridge where you've just got to think about the seven months that you've been training. You know, twice a day, squeezing in your studies, going to sleep, dreaming about the boat race, waking up thinking about rowing. You know, it's all encompassing, isn't it? And it's exhausting, this race, but it's exhilarating. And this is the culmination of all that work now. And that is all that stands between Cambridge and victory again in the men's boat race, taking it back from Oxford, who won last year. And last year were very different crews, as it was in the women's race. Last year were crews of dark blue and light blue stacked with internationals. This year is more of a, a club feel, a university feel, more undergraduates in here, fewer internationalists. The same class again from Cambridge. This is, as we said, the lighter crew, the smaller crew, and it's going to be victory, I'm sure, and vindication for Rob Baker and his coaching, because this has been very, very impressive from Cambridge, and they're holding Oxford at bay, and this will be hard, hard work for Oxford now in the final moments of this race, because they're just not closing. I think this is a real, like I said in the women's race, a real turning of the tide for Cambridge. This is potentially going to be four wins out of five now for Cambridge. Let's get final thoughts from Wayne Palmer, who's been watching this race, and as a former Cambridge man, you must have been so impressed with this. Yeah, this has been a nice race from Cambridge, and they're looking very strong now, as you've been saying. Nice, long, sweeping strokes, nice timing. They've been able to relax a little bit in the last five minutes and, and stretch out, but they have not been let off the hook by this Oxford crew. Oxford crew have been behind since really the beginning and they have not let off the pace. He kept Tony Reynolds very busy in the umpire's position. But certainly one of the best races we've seen in the last decade. And there is Felix Drinkle in the stroke seat. It'll hurt for him, it'll hurt for JP Dufour, who's looking for victory. Alex Bebb in the boat has won before, but as the water starts to chop up again, well, asking for one miracle effort from Oxford here. They are getting a bit closer. Looks like Felix Drinkle is really struggling here. He's put in so much work. His blade's late. He's, looks like he's really struggling to keep it uh, together. Yeah, you can see that. You can see that blade of the stroke man, Felix Drinkle. And Oxford are coming down, throwing everything at this here. It's going to be a narrow victory for Cambridge. But narrow is enough in the boat race because victory is all that matters. It is Cambridge again. That's a great race. And not a huge winning margin. But the light blues take it. They take it all again in all the boat races. And Jasper Parrish will clamber beyond Luca Ferraro to his brother Ollie Parrish. Brothers united in victory for Cambridge. A smile behind from Noam Mouli as well and handshakes. And again, all smiles. And as the umpire says, Tony Reynolds, fantastic race because it really was. But again, as we've said so many times in the boat race, it's binary, it's win or lose. It is all or nothing and as Cambridge celebrates, Oxford will commiserate.